Good evening, everyone. My name is Pastor Pete, and I serve the First United Methodist Church in Brookings, South Dakota. I will take the mask off. I'm grateful to Sam, who is an amazing cameraman and uh, everything else man. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus and thank you for joining us. Can I try this on you? Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of all the difficult stuff? The virus and the riots and the general grumpiness in society and financial pressure and anxiety. As somebody said to me, I find adulting so hard. I really would like to just be a child where the only thing I have to worry about is keeping my parents safe. But here is an opportunity to pause in the middle of the week to draw breath. We will sing, we will pray, we will read from the Bible. And in a moment, we're going to look at a psalm that seems to be written specifically for a time such as this. But first, let us pray. O oh God, beyond description, you are like the wind in the trees. We can see you at work, but cannot grasp the size and the shape of you. You breathed into eternity and our world came into being. Light and dark, sea and dry land, plants, animals, and the wonderful, colorful array of human beings around us, all held in your loving embrace. Help us tonight in our worship. Breathe your Holy Spirit into our words that we might have courage for life. Teach us how to hear you in this time we spend together for Christ's sake. Amen. And so I take us to a psalm. I'm taking us to Psalm 91, which is a prayer. It's a prayer that has carried people through difficult times for the past 2,500 years. The Jewish Talmud calls Psalm 91 the Song of Plagues. It's used in morning prayers, it's used on the Sabbath, it's used in the days of holy festivals, and it's used at burial services. Tradition says that Moses used this prayer as he was going up Mount Sinai to meet his Creator, a moment where Moses was petrified and prayed a psalm for protection before God. And so I'm inviting us to read a psalm together. And it would really be helpful if you had your Bible. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause for a moment. I will wait for you to come back, go fetch your Bible. In fact, there will be just a little bit of wonderful filler music on the screen. Sam's busy looking at me saying, what? But we'll, we'll pause, some music will come up. You have a chance to rush off and find your Bible. Come back and join us. So I'm going to use the Bible that is in church. Maybe it's a little more holy. Maybe, maybe it just carries that kind of clout. But we're going to read from Psalm 91. 
He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you. No scourge shall come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge of you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample under your foot. Because he cleaves to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. We give thanks to God for the Psalms and for the way these scriptures encourage us and carry us through tough times. And so I'll use a combination of this reading and of the version in the Good News Bible to help our reflection tonight. And you obviously have whatever versions you have got with you too. Psalm 91 verse 1, Whoever goes to the Lord for safety... Whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty can say to him, You are my defender and my protector. You are my God. In you I trust. Whoever goes to the Lord for safety. So, so where do we go to find God? Certainly some earlier forms of faith much of what we read in the Old Testament, had the idea of God living up above the mountains. So when you went to pray, you'd go up a mountain to find God. And many of those early communities had sacred groves in the mountains where you would go to offer your prayers to God because you were closer to God, who lived in the firmament just above the clouds. Some of the early Christians would go out into the desert to encounter God. Some people go to special holy places. They will go to Jerusalem to find God, or, or many go to the Vatican to find God. Or perhaps you will think you find God in a building. So when you are really afraid, you walk across the road to stand in front of a church to feel brave. Maybe you need to hold a Bible to steady your shaky nerves. The fact is, the fact is, we don't go to find God. It is God who finds us. The psalm uses this wonderful picture of a bird to describe our relationship with God. Let me read it for us again. Psalm 91 verse 4. He will cover you with his wings. You will be safe in his care. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. Or the older version, he'll cover you with his pinions. Under his wings you will find refuge. 
Here's, here's the amazing picture of baby chicks who've emerged from their eggs into this big, difficult, scary, wonderful world. And as they stand blinking in the harsh sun, the mother spreads her wings to protect them. And when the thunder rolls and the lightning strikes, it's the mother who spreads her wings to protect her chicks. And the psalm then continues in verse 5. You need not fear any dangers at night or sudden attacks during the day or the plagues that strike in the dark or the evils that kill in daylight. Wait, did you, did you pick up those words there? Let me go back to it. Verse 5. You need not fear the plagues that strike in the dark. Another translation says, you need not fear the pestilence that strikes. In fact, this is repeated. We find the same phrase. Verse 3. He will keep you safe from all hidden dangers and from all deadly diseases or all pestilence. And again in verse 6. The plagues that strike in the dark. And then in verse 7, a thousand may fall dead beside you, ten thousand all around you, you will not be harmed. And then verse 10, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague shall come near your tent. You see, we are not the first to experience invisible illness striking us down. There are records in the scriptures of people suffering from plagues. You will remember the famous one, the ten plagues of Egypt. There are, however, other stories of plagues in the scripture as well. 1 Samuel chapter 5 talks about the plagues that people suffered. Both Jeremiah and Ezekiel speak of the pestilence that is upon the land. And Jesus himself dealt with the pestilence or the plague of leprosy. And so many generations have used this prayer, the prayer of Psalm 91, to get them through pestilence and all the other things that make us afraid and make us wish we did not have to be adults in this difficult world. The words here are quite clear. Psalm 91 verse 15. When they call to me, I will answer them. When they are in trouble, I will be with them. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with a long life. I will save them. And I can almost hear you saying in your head, but hang on, that's not true. They are God-fearing, Jesus-loving people who have got sick and who have died from COVID-19 or died from cancer or died from car accidents. Where was God protecting them? So can I just clear this one thing out the way? Let's be clear about our faith. Some people try and peddle a form of faith that promises give your life to Jesus and no harm will come to you. As if we Christians a part of an exclusive club. Sign up for Jesus and you'll be okay. But those who are not Christian, sorry for you, God's not looking out for you. And we all know this to be false. Because godly people get sick too. In fact, there are stories of pastors who have died of the coronavirus. Even Jesus was tempted by this kind of thinking. Do you remember when Jesus went into the desert and he faced temptations from the devil? One of the temptations was, if you are really the Messiah, throw yourself off the temple and show people that you will not get hurt. Because true God-loving Messiah-like people never get hurt. In fact, the devil used the very verses from Psalm 91. Psalm 91, 11 and 12. Listen. God will put his angels in charge of you to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you with their hands, keep you from hurting your feet on the stones. They're familiar because we've heard them 
in the stories of the temptation. Jesus responds to this. Jesus says this kind of religious nonsense is not part of God's conversation with us. Jesus says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. The protection of God is not up for debate. What is up for debate is the way you live your faith. We have been persuaded by the culture we live in that the very worst thing that can happen to us is that we can die. And say, so if God doesn't keep me alive, if God doesn't protect me, then God has failed me. And some people go as far as saying, then there is no God, because surely if there was a God, God would protect me. But what if the protection of God is not about keeping us alive? Or keeping us from getting the virus? Or about keeping us from the dangers of society? What, what if the protection of God is something way bigger and way more wondrous? Jesus knew better. Jesus knew that people got sick and died. And Jesus knew that the worst thing that could happen to us is not dying. The worst thing that can happen to us is living without faith. Whenever Jesus spoke of death, he didn't give us tips on how to stay alive. Instead, he gave us words on how to live with integrity and honor. Do you remember those words they recorded in John 15, verse 13? Greater love has no one than this. Jesus says, the most awesome way of living is this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. The greatest meaning we can have in life is not hanging on to our lives Praying that God keep us safe against everything. Says Jesus, the greatest honor you can have in living is offering up your life for those around you. And I think we need to read this prayer through the perspective of Jesus. In this psalm, I'm asking that my faith be protected. I'm asking God to prevent me from falling down in my capacity to keep trusting God. Even when I'm facing the moment of my own death, Lord, grant me the grace to do it well. Let me make this very personal. Some of you might know that I'm from South Africa. I am now 10,000 miles away from my home. And I have had moments of, of feeling despondent, of feeling far away from home and of wanting to say, Lord, keep me safe so that I can see my family again. The psalm reminds me that my prayer needs to be different. Lord, keep me faithful. Let me live my life here in this strange foreign country where they speak with accents and drive on the wrong side of the road. Here, keep me faithful. May I live my life with integrity and honor as you have intended me to do. Spread your wings over me. Protect my faith that I might honor you in all that I do. That, that my friends, is the ultimate way of living our lives together. And so here's the invitation for today. Maybe I can frame it in three ways. Don't be seduced by the desire to stay alive forever. In fact, it was Freddie Mercury who said, who wants to live forever? Rather, hear the invitation to live faithfully before God. So that even when thousands fall around me, when I see tens of thousands dying, my faith will be rock steady. For this to take place, I will not allow my fear to cause me to insult and diminish other people. Because the love of the wings of God around me will lead me to bless others and not to curse others. 
when I am protected by the wings of God, I will not be frightened into asking that the military crush the protesters. Because the cooling presence of God's Holy Spirit will enfold our nation with wings of wisdom to change the way we speak to one another and we treat one another. And a thought struck me. I will not allow the frightened little boy inside of me make me refuse to wear a mask because somehow I think that will make the virus go away. Or I think it makes my image tougher. Instead, I will pray for God to be like a mother bird, spreading her wings over me and keeping my fragile faith strong in tough times. Let me read again Psalm 91 verse 4. He will cover you with his wings. You'll be safe in his care. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. And so we're going to pray together. We're going to pause for a moment and bring ourselves and our families, our nation, our world before God. There is a response that will happen. It will appear on the bottom of the screen. The response from us will be, may we all work for a better society. Because I believe it's not our job to tell God that God's not doing stuff. It's our job to hear God saying, take hands with me, that we all might work for a better society. So let us pray. O God of all creation, spread your mighty wings over us tonight. Keep our faith safe tonight. We pray for those who are caught up in the civil protest throughout our country. We pray for those who are angry at our messed up social systems of racial injustice. May we all work for a better society. We pray for those who are responsible for preserving the safety and the security of us all. May we all work for a better society. We pray for our political leadership. Raise up leaders who seek to serve rather than be self-serving. May we all work for a better society. We pray for those who are caring for the sick and the dying. May we all work for a better society. We weep for the loss of life. We light a candle as we remember them. We weep for those who have died unnecessary deaths in the United States, Amord Arbery, Breonna Taylor, Taylor, George Floyd. In South Africa, Collins Causa and the 11 other people as a, as a result of police action. Lord God, Grant us the desire to see a God-centered justice and righteousness in our world. Touch us all with your peace. This we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And so we have a song. 
It is a song that grows out of Psalm 91, a song that beautifully captures in melody these words. And I invite you to pause with the song and allow the song to minister to your soul. Let's pause for a moment with this song.
And so thank you for joining us today. I am inviting you to bring your gifts to God. I'm grateful that you continue to support the life of this church. Through your gifts, we are able to pay our staff and through them, able to continue to offer care to our community. I invite you to give your gifts online or to use our postal service. You will see all the details on the screen. Allow me a moment to pray over our gifts. Lord God, we bring our gifts to you, praying that they might not only be a sign of our love and our affection for you, but that they might be used to bless others. So honor these gifts that we give in Jesus' name. Amen. And so receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, may the fellowship of God's Spirit hold us and go with us today, through this week, and to eternity. Amen. God bless. Have a great day.